Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Touch MBA podcast. I'm your host, Darren. I've been hosting this show for over 10 years now, and I think every once in a while, it's good to remind my listeners and myself why I'm doing the show. The big idea is to get beyond the very formal presentations, websites, and glossy brochures that you might find at you know, MBA information sessions or MBA fairs. My goal with this show is to peel back the curtain on what makes each of these top-ranked business schools unique from a program perspective, from an admissions perspective, and from a careers perspective to help you, MBA applicants, make the best MBA investment. So this week, I spoke with the Rotterdam School of Management, which is based in Erasmus University in Rotterdam, Netherlands. And RSM, as it is called for short, is the top-ranked school in Netherlands. It's one of the uh, top business schools in Europe. And the program really markets itself as a high-value one-year MBA program that starts in January. So I spoke with Joachim Krusen, who is the academic director of the RSM full-time MBA and also an associate professor in organization theory, as well as Maria Sackley, who is the recruitment and admissions manager for the Americas. So I hope you enjoy our discussion and get these little nuggets that, you know, give you a better taste for what this school is really about. And remember that at touchmba.com slash podcast, you can find this episode as well as, you know, a high level summary of the program. So with every episode we do, we have a accompanying write-up. And when we interview schools like RSM this week, we include a short summary of the program. So those of you researching schools might also want to check out our write-ups as well to help you get a quick grasp of what these programs are about. And with Touch MBA, what we're really trying to do is make it easier for you to find best fit MBA programs and make the best MBA investment given your circumstances. So we offer a free profile review at touchmba.com where, for example, we would give you our thoughts on, on your target MBA programs, how competitive you are there. Based on your must-have criteria for business school, we also recommend certain programs. And we also look at your resume or your LinkedIn profile, whatever you include, and give you some tips on how you can strengthen your profile before you apply for your MBA. So all of that is at touchmba.com. And let's get straight to my conversation with Joachim and Maria from the Rotterdam School of Management MBA program. Here we go. I'm really excited to have our next two guests on the show. Uh, Joachim Krusen, the academic director of Rotterdam School of Management's full-time MBA program and an associate professor in organization theory, as well as Maria Sackley, uh, recruitment and admissions manager for the Americas at the Rotterdam School of Management, also known as RSM at Erasmus University, and Rotterdam is in the Netherlands. It's um, been a perennial top school in Europe, and I'm really looking forward to understanding, you know, what makes this program unique, and of course, giving you guys some good admissions tips as well. So before we start, uh, welcome, Maria and Joachim. Thank you. Hi, Darren. <laughs> and uh, would you mind just briefly telling our audience what each of you does at RSM? Sounds good. I'll, I'll go first, uh, Darren. Uh, great to be on the show. Um, right. I, yeah, I'm responsible for uh, the academic quality of the full-time MBA program. It's a role I've taken up uh, in September, so I'm quite fresh in the role. I'm actually a graduate of RSM, so I studied there, my PhD. I left for, for eight years. I was in another school, competitor school, I won't mention, and now I'm back, and I'm really excited about what we have here. And I'm really fortunate to be in a position to work on the MBA program and make it even better. Uh, we've elevated the role. So my role is, is not just about making sure courses run well, but it's really about creating the whole overall experience as, as good as possible. Got it. Crystal clear. And Maria? Perfect. So yeah. I'll go next. Thank you so much for hosting us, Darren, first of all. And uh, yeah, you said it right. I'm one of the recruitment and admissions managers for the International Full-Time MBA program at RSM. I take care primarily of the Americas region. Of course, throughout the application process, I get to speak with 
people from all over the world. Program is very international, as we're going to mention later on as well. So I basically support and share information with candidates who are interested in pursuing an MBA at RSM, checking their eligibility to apply, support them with any questions they're having, meeting them online, answering their emails, meeting them also uh, while we travel. So there's a lot of contact with people who are interested in, uh, in joining RSM's community. Perfect. So usually we only have one guest on the show, but now we have you know someone on the admissions side who's used to dealing with applicants and someone, I guess you could maybe say more on the back end, even though you're on the front end uh, this time, concerned about quality of the program. And I can't wait to actually get into details about the academic offering of RSM. But let me first start, I always start every podcast with the same question, uh, which is, you know, what makes the RSM MBA unique from all the other top business schools? What makes it different? Should I start? start and I'm sure ahead. Joachim will have uh, a lot of things to share as well. For me, and also, of course, as an employee of RSM, I see that every day. It's the collaborative environment of the, of the school. I think this is what makes it really unique. We are a school that really focuses on teamwork, doing things collectively. And we're really, really happy and proud when we see our students also continuing this legacy of RSM. Of course, it's international character. It's also really important. I think that's also something that makes it stand out. So yeah, there's a lot of value in there as well. Yeah, yeah, I would second that. It's, and actually, it's also it's a 12-month program, right? So we're a shorter program that sets us apart. Um, we've had a mission in place at the school that we're, we've been bringing to life in the MBA, and increasingly so. It's a, a mission about positive change. So we're connecting to the SDGs. So we're looking at you know, the broader purpose of management and business in society. And it's something that consistently attracts students and it's something that we're very proud of. It's something that also sets our curriculum apart. So we also continue to innovate in that space, adding new courses, new projects that connect to that. Yeah. I mean, would you mind expounding on on SDGs just in case someone hasn't heard of them? Yeah, I think that's a good point. So these are the UN's Global Goals for Sustainable Development. And this is sort of the best framework that we have globally to define the big challenges that we face today as society to which you as a future business leader can can contribute right and make a difference so actually this week we had our new co cohort come in mm. and you know oh, it's a fun week yeah, yeah it's, oh it's a great week and it's my <laughs> first cohort coming in so that was it was really nice to see all the energy and even though i'm in many processes, I'm on the back end. I'm very much on the front end for this one so really setting the scene and and showing the new cohort what we're about and one thing that we do is is to bring the SDGs out and say, hey, you know, you're here for your own individual journey, but can you reflect on how that connects to one of the SDGs? Because we we aspire for you to to you know make 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 a positive different difference in the world after your your MBA and join our alumni network that already doing great things there. Um, so that's something that's quite quite front and center in this in this in this introduction week so far. Yeah, absolutely. So again, twelve month program starts in January, which is also a little bit different than most programs. And mm -hmm. I, I think, yeah, what's interesting is that um, the program has scholarships related to this mission of the school as well. And yeah, we'll get to that. But Joachim, let me ask you, you know, academically having been, and I'll mention the school, I think it's okay. You were formerly at Cambridge, right? Judge Business School. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> academically, how does this program really stand out as well? Yeah. There's a lot of things I can say, so I'll be, I'm going to try and be concise here. <laughs> but one thing that I think that's worth mentioning is that we're an absolute uh, top university. So we're ranked among the best in the world consistently for the quality of our research, the impact of our research, particularly when it comes to business, right? So I mentioned the Shanghai ranking, for instance, big prestigious ranking where we're currently sitting in, in third place, right? So you're getting really the best and brightest uh, in the classroom. We are a university or a business school that has been founded by organizations, by big multinationals. So that deep uh, connection to the business world runs in our veins, right? So compared to other schools that are founded from academic disciplines, we really have always been very close uh, to the business world. And you see that today still in the program. Uh, our faculty is incredibly international, uh, incredibly diverse. And we actually complement our own RSM faculty regularly also with external speakers, um, both from industry, obviously, but also from, from abroad. So if we're looking for someone with a particular 
expertise that we do not necessarily have, have in our in our own faculty pool they they come in and that's something that we've done for you know decades and it's i think something that we're leading in yeah and i was curious about the the pld or the personal leadership development and how that seems to be a really big focus for the program and at least you guys really say this bleeds into every you know all the classes and a lot of the assignments and yeah. um could i learn a little bit more about that because sure. that that yeah that program yeah, in so particular so, was interesting right so also from my experience working at other schools since having seen other mba programs i think something that indeed truly sets uh, the rsm mba apart is that we have these integrative learning journey, journeys that run throughout the program uh, and the biggest one is indeed the pld so it's personal leadership development it's something that actually is starting right now they're currently in class with their first pld session and it will run, run throughout the curriculum where we put them in teams we make sure we hold um, a mirror basically in front of them across the journey right so when you come to rsm be prepared to challenge yourself, confront yourself, and grow as a person, right? So things will change. Things sometimes will be uncomfortable. Yesterday, we had a, a panel with alumni, and they all collectively said, you know, one of the greatest things that happened to me is that I just became more confident as a leader uh, throughout the journey. And the PLD is something that directly focuses on that, right? With teamwork, with coaching, we have professional coaches along the way. We encourage peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, coaching as well. So that's a, 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 indeed a big distinguishing component, I would say. Yeah. And a little bit more about the MNCs. I'm wondering if that has affected the academic strengths of Rotterdam, you know, like its relation with, with corporations or its history, you know, maybe I know Rotterdam is this big port city. Is it strong in supply chain? Or I'm just wondering kind of the history of the school and, and how that relates to its academic strengths, if possible. Yeah, Sure. The, it's almost a bigger question, right, about the Netherlands, I would say. <laughs> sure. And I'm, I'm originally from the Netherlands myself, so I might be biased here, but in many ways, I think this is the best place to do your MBA because we have such an incredibly diverse and innovative and future-oriented uh, industry uh, here uh, in the Netherlands and a very small space. Right. So we're a tiny country with a lot of stuff happening. So whatever your background, whatever your interest, you'll find a place to make an impact here. You'll find a place to pivot your career here in an exciting sector, right? Compared to other places that sometimes feel that they're drifting off a little bit from, you know, the world set, world stage, social divisions, et cetera. The Netherlands is quite stable. And I think we continue to be the center of much of the innovation. We're part of the European Union. Indeed, we have the, the port of Rotterdam. We are consistently as a country one of the most connected, internationally connected countries in the world, right? So both in terms of volume of capital or goods crossing borders, but also in terms of diversity of people coming into the country. So a lot of stuff happening. And RSM taps into all of that, right? So historically, uh, the university has always placed leaders in businesses. So I think currently about 35% of all CEOs in the Netherlands come from Erasmus University. With You're kidding me. The majority coming from 35%? RSM. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it shows you that we've, we've contributed to wow. building this really diverse and resilient economy, I would say. Yeah. I mean, Maria, uh, are you from the Netherlands? I'm originally from Greece That's, and I can yeah. confirm what Joachim says. I might be a little <laughs> less biased, although I live in the Netherlands for 12 years now. So it's been a long time, but definitely the Netherlands is, it has a very multicultural society. It's really open to people who come from abroad. Uh, speaking also from personal experience, I came from my studies 12 years ago, as I said, and I, I saw that there's a lot of potential for me to grow as a professional. Uh, unlike other places in the world, people can communicate in English here. I mean, it's, I believe, voted every year one of the best uh, English-speaking countries that are non-native uh, English speakers. So language is not a barrier uh, with regards to uh, people feeling comfortable and safe and also finding job opportunities in the country so that's also very important for people to know i think because definitely if you're looking to doing your mba 
it could be 12, 15 months, uh, in our case, of course, a year, 12 months, but you're potentially also looking into staying in the country. Will you be building your network a little longer, perhaps looking for job opportunities in the place where you'll be studying and where you will have your support network uh, helping you out along the way? So it's also, of course, very important to see that there are companies out there who are interested in um, recruiting uh, or having people in their workspace that come from abroad and have all these fresh ideas coming in the workspace and helping them where nationality doesn't really matter or speaking the language is not really a, an obstacle in growing. Yeah, I mean, because we have a lot of international listeners to the show and maybe they haven't thought of Netherlands as you know the top uh, study destination. And I'm just wondering, like, if this is kind of a casual question, but what is the vibe like in, in Rotterdam? And for the vast number of graduates that end up staying in the Netherlands to work, do they end up staying in Rotterdam or do they end up in another city? Um, just trying to get a, a picture of the work life in Netherlands. Definitely. Yeah. I can I can share some thoughts or Johan, feel free to go. Shall I go first? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, Rotterdam is a very diverse city. I think it's registered more than 180 nationalities. So you can literally hear English spoken everywhere in the city. Uh, it's very modern itself, super vibrant. Of course, Erasmus University helps a lot with having also this student feel in the city. A lot of companies are also located uh, in the city. The port of Rotterdam, as we mentioned as well, it gives a lot of opportunities for people to uh, find jobs in this sector. As far as the placements is concerned, the vast majority of our students stay in the Netherlands or in another European destination after their studies. Most of them stay in the Netherlands, of course, for the reasons that we mentioned also before, plus the flexibility for non-European passport holders into receiving a visa. First of all, of course, sponsored from the school. As students, you'll be receiving an 18-month student visa, and then you can extend this visa with 12 more months on top of that, so that you can stay in the country without having a work permit, looking for jobs, or already working on your first contract uh, without needing to be sponsored by an employer. And I think that's also very important. But I would say, because the Netherlands is a small country, like Johan said, people tend to disperse a little bit in other bigger cities uh, in the country. Uh, but definitely, we have a lot of our graduates staying in Rotterdam eventually after their studies and uh, working there. Yeah. No, we, we had a panel even yesterday uh, with alumni, and they described it as well, right? So most of them will live in Rotterdam, naturally, during the MBA. Uh, and Rotterdam is a great city. It's it's interestingly it's an it's a really nice mix i think that you won't find anywhere else in the netherlands where you have the historic center with its own vibe but it's been significantly modernized so in some ways it also has a more sort of north american feel almost to it so it's really the best of multiple worlds coming together in that way and then post mba i find many of them for instance move to amsterdam um, and other places that are all you know an hour by by train away from from the center so they keep in touch Got it. Yeah. I mean, one, one more question I had about the program is, you know, how customizable and flexible it is and like how many, you know, what, what's the opportunity for someone to really customize the program, whether it's through the courses or through exchanges, et cetera. Yeah. Cause I, one year will go by really fast. So I'm wondering, yeah, how much structure there oh, yeah. is. Yeah, it is. It is a real pressure cooker and <laughs> Uh, especially the front end is is tough. It is a rigorous program, right? There's a lot of opportunity to learn, but it's also challenging in that way. So the first half a year is is pretty significantly structured in just core courses. Uh, we have one project towards the end of it, which is is really cool. Actually, it's a, a a new element that we've added over the last few years. Working on that as well now. It's called the Impact Experience. So so you'll be thrown in the deep end for a week. And you'll be challenged to actually think about how you and your team can make a positive impact to the city of Rotterdam to try and make the city of Rotterdam more sustainable. So your task with uh, narrowing down to a particular problem that you care about and then try and use whatever skills you've built uh, to launch an idea, launch a project. And the best projects will try and actually take forward uh, and some of them actually make it to a real venture. So that's very exciting. So that's already a place where some tailoring starts. Then the second half of the program allows you to do a lot more. So we have a portfolio of study trips 
Uh, so unlike some other schools, we have a real variety of trips that you can take, some of them closer to, to uh, home, others further away on a variety of different subjects. We have an elective portfolio. So you at the moment, you have three electives that you can pick out of a massive portfolio. And then there's advanced courses um, that you can also take. So in that sense, you have at least five uh, courses, right? Where uh, you can decide out of a long uh, list what, you, what you'd like to do. And then throughout the journey, there is a few projects as well that allow you to, to focus on the particular things that you're interested in. When the program wraps up, so it's to, towards the end of the calendar year, right? There's opportunities for exchange and internship that, that tend to happen actually between January and March. So quite a few students make use mm. of that as well. I see. So even after the program technically ends, right? People do exchanges and internships for three months or so. Is that right? Yeah. So formally, yeah. So formally, the graduation is in March, right? So Got courses it. run Got January it. to December. Uh, yeah. You graduate in March, and that means that uh, those those last few months before graduation, you can uh, you can do other exciting things. Got it. And then uh, you mentioned advanced courses. What are advanced courses? So we have currently five advanced courses and those allow you uh, to specialize in a particular area if you want. I and see. if you then also match your yeah. electives up to that advanced course. Um, so we have advanced course in sustainability, but also in supply chain, uh, marketing strategy, finance. Got it. No, I think, I think that that's a great overview of the program. I mean, is there anything else that we missed about the program itself that you either of you would like to add? I think what's also very important is to mention the support that our students will be having during the year from our Career Development Center. I'm sure you had it in your list of questions, but I'm <laughs> catching you up here. Um, that's great. Let's each get student... it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, because I think that's also very important for people to know, because obviously you'll be doing an MBA, uh, of course, to build up on your academic knowledge. But uh, of course, having the uh, the thought in mind that you would like to well push yourself further and develop yourself as a professional. So each of our students will be paired with a career coach from almost the beginning of the program. And you'll be working, so students will be working with uh, their uh, coach throughout the whole year, first in group sessions, and then later on after the advanced concentration courses that uh, Jochen mentioned in individual one-on-one -on -one sessions. And in these sessions, you'll be really able to make a plan as to where you are right now, where you'd like to see yourself develop throughout the MBA year. And of course, making sure that together with your coach, you will stick to your goals and reach out to certain companies that could be your potential employers. And of course, you'll get support into figuring out what kind of skills you would need to develop, others that you will need to acquire as to make sure that you are, you have a competitive profile and you have really high chances of getting the positions that you would like to see yourself grow into. The networking is also a really important part of it. Definitely our coaches support our students with that, but already uh, our program being so diverse and international, our students being in a classroom of, well, currently we have 101 students and there are 31 nationalities in there. You can imagine that you can interact with people from completely different backgrounds, different cultures and nationalities. So that already gives them the opportunity to really expand their network already by being in such a diverse classroom. And I think that's also very important to mention. I mean, when... Yeah. what? Yep. When does the recruiting start? We have different cycles throughout the year. So we've officially, together with the beginning of the academic year of our current class, we've started already with, uh, well, speaking with people who are interested in pursuing an MBA program at RSM. We have six application rounds throughout the year. The first deadline is February 7th. And then after that, every two months, we have an application deadline where um, our candidates can submit their application. Uh, ideally, we would have the chance to offer uh, our feedback from a CV assessment so people can uh, share their CV or their LinkedIn page online to one of the admissions managers, depending on their place of residence. And then we reach out to them and let them know if basically they're eligible to apply. And if so, we'll be happy to continue communication. So we also try to offer possibilities of having one-on-one uh, -on -one calls. We use Zoom very often. And many times, of course, we're on the road traveling, meeting people in uh, their own space and their locations, which is also very exciting. But yeah, going back to your question. So we have these six application rounds. People can submit their application literally throughout the year. The latest that we have is November. In practice, all the application rounds are open for international students, but I would 
from experience, highly advise for people who are already thinking into uh, making this big step into locating to the Netherlands. It does take a little bit of preparation, so don't leave it for the last moment for sure. And if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to us before. Yeah, but let's talk about admissions and scholarships. Yeah, so you gave us the sort of recruiting recruiting days, and it's really interesting, right? Because I think there's two types of schools in in my experience. One are schools like Rotterdam that are actually willing to talk to applicants before they've applied and do things like you said, like a CV assessment or a one on one Zoom call, and and there's other schools that they don't give you any of that. <laughs> and so I think it's interesting to talk about what you're looking for in the context of your program offering to help and guide applicants. So if if I may, could I first start with, you know, in terms of the qualities you're looking for from applicants, like what, what really gets you excited? Yeah. What are the requirements? I would say aside, okay, leaving aside the really fixed requirements that we're having on our website and people feel free to go to RSM's website and, and check those out. I would say that, and this is of course why we have this more personal approach uh, in terms of recruitment and admissions. We want to understand a little bit more about the candidate as a person. This is really important for us. We want to see what motivates you. What's your your passion? What are your goals? What are your reasons also of pursuing an MBA or potentially pursuing an MBA at RSM? your maturity as a candidate, your, your, your communication skills, how good of a team player you are, because the program is really focusing on group work. And uh, of course, one of the most important aspects of, I think, and assets that a manager can have is uh, working together with their team to achieve better results. So we want to see that there's potential in there. And of course, the best way to find that out is, of course, not just going through a few results and pages of uh, an application, which are also very important. I don't want to downplay it, but most important for us is to understand a little bit more about the candidate as a person. This is what is very interesting. And of course, what excites us, I mean, well, the mission statement of RSM is being a force of positive change. So of course, when each one of us sees in the profile of a candidate that they have been demonstrating that with their actions, either as a professional or on a personal level, doing volunteering work or working with clients international on projects that have a positive social impact, then this is something, of course, that draws our attention. And it's definitely a really good tip for candidates to uh, definitely add this in their CV and in their application data, because it's definitely going to help their application stand out. Joachim, anything to add? I don't think so. I think Maria <laughs> summed it all up. Um, right. So I guess the summary is that what we're trying to do is we're creating a cohort of, of great people, right? So it's it's more than piece of paper and GMAT scores. It's really, we're looking at the people that we're bringing in the classroom because, you know, even though I'm the academic director, I know that at least 50% of the value of the experience is, is, is not going to be the coursework, right? It's really the cohort that we bring together that's going to bond and stay, you know, stay in touch for the rest of your life. So we put enormous amounts of energy in that. We take a particularly personal approach. And I think it's one of the reasons that you should choose uh, RSM uh, to do your MBA because there's no other place in the world where we get this diverse of a group together with these kind of qualities. Yeah. So if you don't mind, I'm going to ask some 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 more specific questions about the requirements. Uh, so there's three years of work experience minimum, right? From what I understand. Correct. Okay. I just want to confirm that. Yeah. You guys take the GMAT and GRE. Do you prefer one of those exams? For the admissions? No, for the admissions no. process, that's, well, for, for us, it doesn't make any difference. It's totally up to the candidate, uh, whatever they feel more comfortable uh, going for. I would definitely suggest them to check both before taking their, their official exam, just to see a little bit what's the, like, the structure of each of the exams, because they are from experience of a bit of like the toughest part, let's say, of the of the application preparation and, and process. But for us as a school, no, it doesn't make any difference. And of course, we'll be looking into the results of either GMAT or GRE. Also, to give a little bit more of a background information, some more details about a good GMAT score, because I know it's one of the standard questions that we're receiving, and of course, a really valid one. 
we give our current average, which is 640, as an indication of a good score. Again, and also kind of building up from the, the, the previous question, it's of course an important part of the application process, but it's not the only thing that we are considering. Absolutely not, because it's in the end a number. Of course, it's an indication of how well candidates could potentially do during the MBA year and what are their academic skills at the moment that they're applying. But it's definitely not going to tell us a lot about the um, all soft skills of a candidate, what are their communication skills or motivation, the potential to grow as uh, influential leaders, how, yeah, how well do they work in teams and all that. But yes, a short answer is no preference. No preference. And one more uh, GMAT question is, should candidates who are seeking scholarship funding target higher GMAT scores? What, does that help them? It does help. Yes. Yeah, that's true. And I know that it's uh, very hard, especially because, of course, we're addressing professionals and a lot of people have to, um, or the vast majority actually of our applicants, have to combine really busy schedules with starting for uh, studying for GMAT and also having their personal life as well. But it is a very important part. Uh, so I would advise people to really I try to focus quite a bit on preparing for GMAT. It does help. We do have merit-based scholarships at RSM. We have, well, I would say three types of scholarships, the merit-based scholarships, diversity-based scholarships, and a financial aid uh, scholarship as well. So for the merit-based scholarships, which are obviously the easiest to target because they have to, to do with the results that you're bringing, of course, in your application, GMAT is one of the things that the admissions committee is going to take into consideration. Again, but we check the background of the student, of the candidate as well. So for us, it's equally important, but definitely a GMAT or a GRE that comes closer to our average will increase your chances of success. Yes. Crystal clear. And I appreciate that uh, frankness. In terms of the CV or LinkedIn, do you prefer one or the other? <laughs> no, that's absolutely fine for us. LinkedIn uh, works really, really well in the Netherlands. And I think it's really common in Europe. So we usually suggest candidates who are interested in applying for RSM to already create a LinkedIn profile. Hey. Definitely going to help them, of course, with well their personal brand. Once they start applying for jobs, LinkedIn is a good opportunity, like a social media that they can use for showcasing what they've achieved so far on an academic and a professional level. But for us as an admissions team, no. As long as the candidates, of course, dedicate a little bit of time into making a CV that we can or a LinkedIn page where we can really understand how they have developed throughout the years on an academic and a professional level. That's absolutely fine. They can share with us either of the two or both. I mean, I'm so I'm curious to hear from both of you about this LinkedIn tips. I mean, the tips can be, uh, I wish fewer candidates did this, <laughs> or it could be, you know, I, I, this is uh, really helpful for us, you know, from an admissions perspective, I'd love to hear maybe one or two tips from, from each of you on LinkedIn. Cause I, I, I do see this as, as the future of MBA applications. I could share some thoughts, but it's yeah, only like thoughts also from my per like personal experience, of course, it's quite important to have a clear profile. So adding your academic achievements making sure that you add a little description of your studies, perhaps just to give an idea to the person that goes through what you've actually done, maybe some core courses that you've had or the focus of your studies. Dates usually help. I know that it can be a little bit of a sensitive topic. So some candidates decide not to add any dates in there, but okay, from our point of view, that's really nice to sort of have a little of, of a timeline of what the candidate has gone through, let's say, in order to become the professional they, they, they are at the moment. And the same goes for the description in, uh, in the, the, like the professional part. So what's their work experience? It's really nice uh, for well, an admissions manager or recruitment manager to see a little bit of the core tasks that uh, you've had in each role. It will help us understand a little bit more about what you've done in terms of hard and soft skills sort of see a little bit what, um, visualize a little bit what, what what's your daily life and what are any challenges that you might be dealing with and what kind of skills you develop to overcome them. So, yeah, yeah I, I mean, just I, I think something I preach a lot on the show is is like an MBA resume is actually a lot different than a job resume. And sometimes you just need to be uh, cognizant of who your audience is. 
right? Um, so, I mean, it's, it's just one-on-one stuff with any sort of job application or school application, but just a reminder. <laughs> so if you share your LinkedIn, you know, maybe your LinkedIn profile was intended to get your next job and it's full of technical jargon or, or whatever. But if, if you're using it as your, you know, your CV for business school or RSM, you might need to do, you know, some of the things Maria just talked about. One more question about the, the interview process at RSM and, and how it works. I, I think you guys use Kira but I'm I'm curious what the process is like. Yeah, you're right. Kira is one of the tools that we have implemented in the uh, admissions process. So basically, each candidate can submit, uh, can can start their application anytime. We use Embark platform, and they can submit their application once they're ready. From the moment that the candidate submits their application, uh, we have a couple of days that we need to go through all the details in the application uh, file with the admissions committee. And if everything goes well, the candidate receives an email from us with the details of basically the next steps, informing them that they've gone to the second part, let's say, of the evaluation process. And we also share them with them um, a link on booking an appointment for an admissions uh, interview with a member of the admissions committee. It's a one-on-one -on -one interview. We usually use Zoom, of course, as a communication tool. And there's also some instructions in the same email as to how to complete an online video assessment. We used, uh, like you said correctly, the Kira platform, so it's you will see it um, mentioned in this email as a Kira talent assessment. Ideally, before completing the interview, the candidate should have completed already the Kira talent assessment. So they have, I think, about a week to complete that. But we can get in touch throughout the uh, evaluation process about that. Uh, regarding the Kira, it usually sounds bit scarier than it actually is. It's like a one-on-one -on -one interview, but you're just facing the camera instead of having an interviewer. So you have to answer two questions verbally. And one question is an email that you will have to reply to on a professional level. And for the, the verbal questions, we usually have topics such as, well, I will say like some general, general topics about like, how do people work well in diverse environments, like what are their, the, um, the strategies that they use in order to work in diverse, work well in diverse groups, discussing about any difficulties that maybe they've had in their personal or professional life and how did they overcome them. These kind of questions you will find in the Kira uh, talent assessment. The difficult part in it, of course, is that you work against the clock. So you have a limited amount of time to answer the questions, well, both questions that you have to answer verbally and of course the email as well. So that can be a little bit scary, but in general, you can have some trial attempts before start recording your answer. So once you're uh, confident enough to start recording your answers, you record them, uh, we receive them through the website. And then the other part of the application process, of the evaluation process is the official interview. There's usually one member of the admissions committee there and the candidates. And yeah, the questions that uh, our candidates receive are really I mean, we want to use the interview as an, a way to understand a little bit more about the candidate as a person. So there are a lot of questions there about, of course, the reason uh, of um, candidates choosing RSM to apply for, the reasons for them doing an MBA, uh, sharing a little bit more about their professional career, how different perhaps obstacles they have encountered help them develop and like stay in motion in general in their lives. So yeah, these kind of standard questions, I would say, but... We like to take it more as a form of a discussion rather than <laughs> interrogation. So I think that's also really important for people to know. And I know interviews are uncomfortable and very scary, but it's uh, definitely a way for for us as an admissions team to understand if the candidate could potentially benefit uh, from the program. And of course, also for candidates to learn a little bit more about what our SEMS MBA has to offer. So we're always open to questions during the interview. It's also important to know. And of course, once we have the results of the KIDA assessment and the interview, we have a meeting with the admissions committee where we'll discuss about the candidacy and uh, uh, results of, um, of our candidates. And if everything goes well, they receive a call from one of our admissions managers uh, sharing the good news for them to them. It's also important to mention that once you submit your application, you're also automatically considered for one of the scholarships that we offer as a candidate. So you don't have to go through a special process for that. 
So ideally, uh, if the admissions committee decides that you will uh, receive an offer letter from, from RSM, in the same meeting, we will decide if you'll be offered one of the scholarships and what type of scholarship that is, and of course, the, the amount. So you find out at the same time. And the admissions team is comprised of the admissions managers or faculty, students, like, uh, or is, is it always, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, it, is it always an admissions manager who is doing the interview? Sometimes we've used, very often it is, but uh, sometimes we've used, uh, well, our academic director, mm. sometimes we've used our dean of education uh, support. Okay. So um, yep. we do have, yeah, an admissions committee that's mainly comprised of, well, the admissions and recruitment team. But uh, many times we do ask the help from other colleagues as well, because of course their input is really important. Yeah. Okay. And and the candidates are notified of that, of, of who they'll be interviewing with? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They get the, the details of, uh, of the interviewer in the email that we'll be sharing can, with them. Okay. So it won't be a surprise. <laughs> it won't be a surprise. You know, because I, I know clearly RSM has this real focus on on setting their graduates up for career success after the program. And I'm wondering how important the career goals are in the application process, how specific they need to be. Uh, yeah, just love to, to hear your thoughts there. It definitely helps for candidates to have at least an idea of what they would like to do. It also shows to the admissions committee or to the interviewer how well they've thought their MBA plans through. We don't require them to have specific names of companies, for example, that they would like to be employed to at this stage. Some of our candidates do, but of course, let's not forget that the full-time MBA program is a very transformative experience they're going to go through. So it could be that they have a freely set plan at the application process, but then when they start with their MBA uh, journey, they see a whole load of other possibilities out there. So it could be that their plans change completely. And that's a really good thing, right? So being open to challenges, of course, it's what um, keeps people growing. But for the admissions process, I would say it really helps at least to to have for the candidates to have their their goals clear, what they would like to get out of this uh, of this MBA of the, the MBA program. And in terms of career progress, having a bit of a direction in mind definitely helps. And it doesn't just help uh, candidates throughout the application process itself, but also having a bit of an idea will also give them a further motivation into completing the MBA program with success and really reaching their goals. But we're not expecting people to to have a, a really rigid set of plans, let's say from the beginning of applying for sure. Yeah. So when you say like idea or direction, would that be the geography industry function, just throwing out some frameworks, or is it more like... Uh, yeah, I mean, could you elaborate a little more on, on that? Yeah, sure. So it could be that, um, for example, we've had someone who was who works as, um, well, in finance, or they have a lot of experience in tech companies, and they would like to continue work uh, in well, a similar environment, but they would like to be more in uh, communication with people. So they would go for more strategy-related roles being consultants, like using their experience that they have accumulated throughout the years. They've been working in certain environments, but in a bit different positions. This is what we're looking for at this really early stage, let's say, of, of application and the MBA journey. It's very clear. Could you guys share maybe a tip or two in terms of how you personally feel applicants can improve their chances of uh, admissions at, at RSM? Joachim, would you like to start? <laughs> or shall I go first? <laughs> I can go. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, it does sound like a, a cliche, and I think I touched upon it uh, quite a bit during our, actually both of us, uh, during our um, our talk. It's really important for candidates to really get this opportunity of submitting their application and going through interviews as to showcase who they really are as a person. So avoiding generic answers and yeah, sort of like standardized answers is definitely the key to success. Uh, it really shows to, well, in the interviewer in this case, if you cannot really support your claim when you're just mentioning as an interview certain things that really don't match with your profile or your personality. And the point of, of going through the admissions and application process is for both parties to understand a little bit what the other has to offer and if there is a good match in there 
and I think it's 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 very important for for candidates to really focus on showing their uniqueness, how they can add more value to an already very diverse cohort that we're having. And that's also very important because this will also definitely make their application stand out. Also, in terms of international exposure, if candidates have worked with, um, I don't know, in different locations or, or with clients uh, from abroad or in their personal life, they've taken a year off to travel and do some volunteering, please do add that in there because it adds so much value to your profile. It's really great because it does show us a little bit yeah, again, more things about yourself, like your your willingness to explore and to um, indeed like challenge yourself being in, in, in different environments, like staying a little bit outside of your comfort zone. And that's also very important, I think. Joachim, any, anything, any tips? Well, Maria is doing such a great job on this, much not, <laughs> not uh, but you know, from my perspective, right, what, what you're looking at is the best possible classroom and what kind of people do you need, you need, you need diverse people, people that are be, are being themselves, right? That are confident enough that they can bring themselves to the classroom. They, um, but most importantly, I would then add to that is, you know, you need to be open to learn, right? So we want people that are curious, that are ready to engage and contribute to the community, right? They're not just there for themselves, they're ready to help the the whole group learn, right? That's what, what I would look for as well. Yeah, that I think that's a big tip as well. I mean, I think I think inherently it, it's it's tough for applicants, right? Because I get what you both are saying in terms of being confident in who you are and showing who you are as a person to the admissions committee. But I feel like that involves what Joachim said, opening up. And opening up can often show uh, your fault lines or your what you're not strong at or what you're vulnerable, your vulnerability in certain areas. And I think applicants feel like if I share that, RSM is not going to want me if I share that, you know, I'm weak in, uh, or I need to improve in this aspect, or like I failed at this. I mean, do, do you have any thoughts there? Because I think this is the a big crux of app, MBA applications, right? It's like, how can I show you guys who I am, but not look uh, less qualified? Let's put it that way. Well, you're you're right, and it is true. I mean, it is very scary to share these kind of um, vulnerabilities that we all have in the end of the day with someone who is going to decide whether you'll be admitted yes. to uh, the right. program of your yeah. preference or not. <laughs> Absolutely, but that shows maturity and courage. That these are um, characteristics that are really important, at least for us, seeing in uh, a candidate, and we are interested more on the learnings that you've had from difficult experiences or mistakes that you've made, Love certain that. jobs yeah. that you chose that were a dead end in the end, but what did you learn from it? How did you use that experience to help you grow? And this is what stays with you and with the interviewer or with the admissions team. So you should not be afraid to share these details. Of course, you can share as much as you want or as little as you want. And I know that it's not um, easy. It's, it's easier for some people than for others, depending of course, also on different cultures. But you can use it in your favor, any failure you might have had, depending on the, the narrative, like the story you'll build around it, and also the things that you've actually learned through this experience are much more important than the failure itself. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'd add to that, the interviews that I have done, so when you reach the interview stage, you know, I've never recommended to reject the candidate because they had a skill gap or, <laughs> you know, something some weakness that they work on. I have recommended to reject candidates that just came across, honestly, over overconfident, right? And seemed exactly. to have it all figured out. Those are the candidates I don't think we have a place for, for in a classroom. So it, it, it can be a strength if you know how to present that well. Yeah, great tips, great tips. And uh, just one more scholarship question. Should applicants mention they are targeting the diversity scholarship or the women in business scholarship or the merit scholarship in their applications or or do you guys automatically sort of put them in those buckets when you're thinking about scholarship awards yeah so that's a really good question we have many parts in the application process where um, candidates can sort of give a hint as to which scholarship they're more uh, closer to let's say for example, in the essay, we have an essay that links to, of course, a mission statement of RSM of being a force of positive change, where our candidates can describe 
it's relatively short. It's like more or less 500 words, but they have the possibility to describe either how have they so far become a force of positive change or how do they believe that the MBA program of RSM is going to help them become a force of positive change. There they can already sort of build their narrative as to why they think that a certain type of scholarship will be much more well, closer to their background than others. But um, what happens in the application process is that from the moment, again, as I said, that you submit your application, you consider it for one of the scholarship types that we offer. So eventually, although candidates feel free, of course, to add some details in your application, you can sort of show that you can come closer to a certain type of scholarship than, than the rest. The admissions committee will eventually decide the type of scholarship based on your performance and the details that we have in, in your application and your background, of course, and they will be announcing it to you. So you don't uh, essentially choose the application type that um, you can go for, you can be considered for, but uh, there is, well, from the moment that you apply, there is a possibility of getting actually any of the scholarships that we have. Got it. Crystal clear. So yeah, if if we could now talk about careers um, and you know career opportunities related to the program. So you already mentioned that each student gets a one-on-one -on -one career coach, which sounds amazing. But I'm wondering, yeah, what advantages the school has in terms or or resources that can really you know benefit an international student coming in and 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 trying to find their job of choice at RSM. Yeah, I, I can start with that. Again, it's a network, right? So it's a diversity of the network and that's coming uh, from the alumni site, right? So actually we have baked into the career events that we organize and career workshops that students are taught and encouraged to reach out to our alumni network uh, for their own personal uh, careers. And that's a network that's not just local, right? It's incredibly international. So I think that's an important part to remember, right? Students may choose the RSM MBA because they want to relocate to the Netherlands in the first place. But actually, we have an incredibly international network. Our program is incredibly international. So wherever you want to end up, ultimately, I think RSM MBA is a really good place to start. Students place all over the map in terms of industry as well. It's rare that we have a really dominant sector. So consulting, finance, maybe slightly more dominant, but you know that's that's the MBA space in general. That's right. But yeah. we place regularly yeah. in consumer goods and manufacturing, uh, IT, and, and again, it reflects the market here. So we have connections all the way across. Um, you'll get um, put in front of these companies for, for, for through a wide variety of channels. So be it guest speakers, be it targeted career events, be it the student association clubs that we, that we set up in collaboration with RSM General, right? So our undergrad programs, they have a massive student association. So, you know, there's there's a lot there. <laughs> Marie, anything that, we, uh, that I'm forgetting here? Well, I think you mentioned everything. And of course, having a really diverse cohort, having people from different parts of, of the world and also having different academic and professional experience, this also sort of reflects in the way that people are placed after their their graduation in terms of job opportunities. So as Joachim said, there is a really great variety of companies that are interested in recruiting from RSM's talent pool. And um, they definitely have the possibility to get in touch with students during the MBA program, also through the channels that Joachim mentioned. And also, of course, we have projects such as the Living Management Project, which is a consultancy, consulting-based project. Our students are divided in groups. They uh, work for a month with um, a company that RSM finds for them as external advisor. So they have a really hands-on experience as to, first of all, how to jump into consulting-related roles, which is um, and arguably something that is very interesting for a lot of our students and definitely to understand a little bit how the Dutch market works because we work primarily with international students and it's also very important for them of course to see what are the differences compared to other markets that they have experience in definitely making sure that uh, students get the opportunity to get involved in uh, different student clubs because it also helps of course getting in touch with potential employers. But I would say that, yeah, there's a great variety of, of companies. And of course, being in the Netherlands, 
Uh, having a lot of international companies located here really helps our students find our students find uh, uh, job opportunities and uh, be placed in uh, an international environment after their studies. I mean, if I can ask you, uh, Jokum, because you're an alumni of RSM yourself, and this is kind of related to what Mario is saying about uh, Dutch, perhaps business culture. I'm wondering if there's like a, a a certain better way to reach out to alumni. You know, to reach out to RSM alumni or or what would get you to pay an MBA student more attention? I'm just, yeah, just curious about that. Yeah, it's funny. We, we actually had yesterday with the incoming students a session uh, with alumni. And this was exactly <laughs> a question Perfect. that yeah. the students Perfect. asked, yeah. like, how, how, yeah. what, do you have any tips for me? So, and actually the answer was, well, we, we teach you during the program. So we have a session <laughs> on, on how to yeah. network. And one of the assignments is you know, write 20 messages to 20 different alumni, and here are some tips on how to do that, right? So establish a connection, something you have in common, uh, have an idea of you know what it is that you're looking for, and make a proposal of uh, how you can can go about that to explore that. And you know what we have in our culture is is this idea that everybody's always open to have a coffee with you if you if you share something in common, right? So. But uh, come to the program and we'll, and we'll teach you more about that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. And yeah, I, I guess my last question with careers, I mean, it sounds like there's many opportunities, many different companies. You have about a hundred to what, 150 students a year. How can, okay. Let's say, I, you know, I, I live in Vietnam right now. And if there's someone from Vietnam interested in Netherlands, going to Rotterdam, they could be quite intimidated. Like, uh, maybe English is not my native language. I've never been there before. I don't have any family connections. My company doesn't have an office there, right? And I'm just wondering, what advice would you give international, obviously such an international population, So, but at RSM, but like, what advice you tell people from day one, you know, if they really want to benefit from the RSM MBA network and resources, what they, what do they need to do? Um, because obviously it's a huge investment of their time and money. Yeah. I, the, 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 the best answer is that you invest in, uh, the cohort that you're joining, right? Mm, so there you yeah. bond, right. And that, again, that's, that's really the secret sauce of the RSM MBA. It's that unique group of people that are coming together and those are going to provide you with not just learning opportunities because you learn from each other, but really also career opportunities, right? So again, yesterday we had an example of one of the current students that just want, uh, landed a job because there was another student in the cohort that was interested in an area that she grew towards. And then they made a connection and they found an alumnus from 2015 that had a company that was looking for somebody and she found a job in Netherlands, right? She came from the Philippines. So very similar, I think, story that you were just uh, sharing. And it's just by being open and being ready to meet meet your fellow st fellow students, right? And connect with them, be there along the way. And, you know, as an academic director, you know, your coursework is important, your grades are important, but this is the secret sauce, right? This is why you're coming to to do your MBA here. So so be, make the best out of that. And And a lot of that is just investing in your classmates too, right? Like showing you can really contribute and how you can contribute and showing yourself off in that sense. That's it. Yeah. This has been a great talk. I, I just want to give each of you one, any, the space, if, if I missed anything about RSM, uh, that, that perhaps you wish more applicants knew about, maybe it's like misunderstanding people have about the school or yeah, just something you wish more people knew about the program. Yeah, sure. Like, I would say this is really one of the highest quality programs that you can find in the world. Again, emphasizing the quality of the cohort that we bring together every year. These are excellent people. And again, the people are are what makes the program. I think in some rankings, you find that we are a little bit undervalued in that regard because we're not measuring those things all the time. So it, it really is. And, and every time I speak to our graduates, right, it's, it's massively transformative in ways they had never expected. And the final thing I would add to that, it's so much more than being able to find a job in the Netherlands, right? It is yeah. really an opportunity to learn about what the future is going to bring. So, and it's being made in the Netherlands. I express the diversity of uh, industries that we engage with, but also the innovations that are going on there. 
if you want to see what's going on in terms of the transition towards sustainability, right, the Netherlands is an excellent place to learn that. And so also for those of you that do not necessarily aspire to move to the Netherlands long term, you can come to, to Rotterdam and you come, can come and learn about what the future will bring. And you can find your career anywhere in the world afterwards through our international alumni network, for instance. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I mean, Joachim covered so many good points here. I would say that if any candidate is interested in um, working and being in a, in a multicultural environment uh, for at least a year, uh, being part of a, of a school that fosters a collaborative atmosphere more than really hardcore competition, and you're um, yeah open to challenge yourself and uh, you want to keep yourself staying in motion, then there is a, a, a really big chance that RSM is the right school for you. So feel free to reach out to us. We're really happy to answer any questions you might be having. Share your CV with us. Um, join us on events online or in-person meetings that we are arranging and we'll be happy to have a chat. Yeah. And I would say take advantage of that, uh, you know, the guidance that the school is willing to give before you apply. So uh, I just want to thank you, Maria and Joachim, for coming on the Touch and Me podcast. It was a pl real pleasure. And I'm sure this will help uh, a lot of people. We'll link to your program and ways um, our audience can get in touch with you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Darren. Thank you as well. Thanks for listening to the Touch MBA podcast. Remember, you can get free school selection help and a profile review at touchmba.com. You can also follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Just search for Touch MBA.